Hello, 8th grade science students. Uh, we're going to try out me making some videos for you guys so that I can still teach you in a way while we're on our little extended break here. And I'm going to show you today how to read tiles on the periodic table. So before we can really dig into the periodic table and understand the trends and the groups and things like that, it's really important to understand what the individual tiles mean. So I have a couple examples set up for you. We're going to walk through those. And then I'm going to post a little worksheet that you can either print or you could write the answers on a separate piece of paper. And I'll hopefully be posting the solutions to that on Monday so you can check your answers. So to start with, we have a tile for carbon here. And there are four things that are labeled on every tile, the top thing. And it does vary by periodic table a little bit, uh, the order of these things. But generally speaking, they're roughly in the same areas. I think the one that I give you has the name at the bottom, for example. But it doesn't really matter. You can kind of figure that out based on... Uh, what's going on. So the element name is just the name of the element. So in this case, we've got carbon. So that's the element name. The uh, And the symbol, the symbol is down below. So the letter C stands for carbon. Atom atomic element symbols uh, come in kind of two versions. One is just a single capital letter, or since they ran out of letters, uh, you have to do a capital letter and then a lowercase letter. The second letter must be lowercase. If it's not, it can be confusing. So, for example, C, little o is cobalt. Capital C, capital O would be carbon monoxide. So it's really important to make sure that you uh, write the element symbols correctly. So the next two things. So the atomic number is the smaller of the two numbers and it's a whole number. The atomic number is the identifying characteristic of the element. So it tells you what that element is. Carbon is number six, okay? Oxygen is going to be number eight. There's going to be, you know, one through over 100 of them. Finally, the atomic mass. We'll talk more about that later, but the atomic mass is basically how heavy it is sort of at the atomic level. Uh, let's talk about what these values actually mean. So one thing that they like to be able to do for you guys is using the periodic table tile, you should be able to tell me the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in a normal atom of that element. So for carbon, the, the periodic atomic number of six represents the number of protons. So atoms of carbon have six protons. They're found in the nucleus in the center of the atom. The atomic mass is equal to the protons and the neutrons together. So since there's the atomic mass, if we round it to 12, which would be known as the mass number if you round it to a whole number, subtract the six protons. That means carbon has six neutrons. And finally, because we're going to assume all the atoms are neutral at this point, so they have no net charge, protons positive, electrons negative, that means they must have the same number of protons as they do neutron, or say, sorry, the same number of protons as they do electrons. Carbon's also going to have six electrons. Let's do a quick practice. At this point, I would encourage you to pause the video and try to find the protons, neutrons, and electrons for an atom of sodium really quickly. And then I'll show you how I figured that out in order to give you some feedback. Okay, hopefully you gave it a quick try. And so the name of sodium is sodium. The symbol is N little a. If you write N capital A, I would actually, if I were grading, I would take points off for that uh, because it is important to make sure that your, your element symbols are correct. So first, the atomic number of sodium is 11. So the protons, which we can denote with the symbol P plus, there's 11 of those. Okay. The electrons, like I told you before, are going to be the same because they need to be electrically neutral at this point. So we have 11. Now, the tricky part, 22.99, that would round up to 23. We subtract 11 from that to give us the number of neutrons because the mass that it has is the atomic mass is equal to the protons and the neutrons together. So if I subtract 11 from 23, we actually get a total of 12 neutrons. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful to you guys. I'll post a little worksheet that goes with this. Do your best and then you'll be able to check your answers on the following Monday. Thank you.